Hey guys and welcome to the 13th episode of the Fantastic Film Factory. In today's episode I'm gonna talk about the distressing and weathering process I went through to give the clothes and the gear of my creature an authentic look. This step is really important because it kind of gives the creature its soul and brings together all the different aspects of this huge project. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. As shown in a couple of scenes in my previous episodes, the heart and soul of my monster's outfit is going to be this blue military coat. You might have seen as well that it looks way too clean and new for the project. And now finally comes the time to change this optical disgrace. The first thing that had to be done was a certain amount of physical weathering of the cloth, just like we did it with the pouch system in my last video. Since the tools I used on them wouldn't work on cloth, my weapons of choice were this piece of steel beam, a file and a rasp. Using the steel as a rigid backing, I used them to create holes and partly unraveled the cloth. The progress on this was really slow and the work was exhausting, but it's a great example that it always pays off if you work hard and are patient. Fortunately, I have a neighbor who owns a belt sander. Thanks, Marcus. So, yeah, after I borrowed a belt sander, the whole process of making holes into the code went a lot faster. I used my stapler to fix the cloth to a massive block of wood, which prevented the sander from grabbing and pulling away the jacket. I tried to focus the damage on spots which were exposed to wear and tear the most, like the sleeves or the lower part of the coat. After the whole sanding procedure was done, I ended up with this clothing, which I think looks already much more promising than the old, newer looking version did. The same thing was done to the trousers I decided to use for my costume. A pair of breeches, which I found for very little money on eBay as well. Now that both the trousers and the coat got a physical weathering, I could start dressing the dummy with the clothes. Here is a short list of all the components that are part of the outfit. This right here is the trousers under the trousers under the trousers, followed by the trousers under the trousers. Their shape and color doesn't really matter, the only purpose of them is to give the appearance of several clothing layers stacked on top of each other, which will hopefully add some more realism to the costume. Finally, we have the pair of trousers I just showed you, which will be the only visible layer. Naturally, we got several clothing layers for the upper body as well. First comes a t-shirt, followed by an old sweater and a jacket. I also decided to give my creature a scarf so that it wouldn't freeze. This is just an other old shirt that was kindly donated to me, but I love the pattern and the colors of it. I think it will go really well with the style I want to give my monster. And to finish it all off, we got the final coat. Now that I had all my final parts, I started dressing the dummy. And I can tell you, putting on clothes on a rigid object is a pain in the ass. While struggling with the pants and questioning the whole point of this project, I realized that I still hadn't a final solution on what to put on the soldier's feet. But I had an idea on what I could do. A kind neighbor gave me this pair of shoes. I admit they appeared quite boring, but we'll work on the look later on. Because before that, I had to drill holes into the soles so that the pipes of the dummy could be fitted through. It made a huge difference to finally see shoes on the dummy and immediately added this kind of human aura to the object. But now, let me tell you what we're going to do about their look. Many soldiers fighting in the First World War wore so-called putties, a long piece of cloth which was wrapped around the legs to provide protection but also warmth in colder areas. Since I find the look of them quite interesting, I took an old fitted sheet and cut it into long strips. These strips got then wrapped around the cuffs of the dummy. I admit that the look of the bright white cloth is not appealing at all, but we're going to paint them later on, so just trust me for now 
that they look nice in the end. I then forgot to focus the camera again focus! and started to put on all the clothing layers for the upper body. Now that the whole outfit was put on the mannequin, it was finally time to start the painting process. I started it by using some black spray paint which was applied to the edges of the coat such as the sleeves, the collar or the pockets of the coat. This should kind of break up the very consistent color of the new coat and add some contrast but also make the appearance of the jacket more edgy and, you know, outstanding. Some paint was also applied to the putties and the trousers. I then applied the first real paint layer. A watery brownish mix with cheap wall paint as pigment. It was brushed onto the lower parts of the coat and the sleeves where mud and dirt would most likely splash onto the outfit. I also brushed some of it onto the calves and the shoes. But all of that still just looked like paint slapped on a clean coat, so I decided to try out a new technique to add a disgusting and crusty ancient appearing patina to the outfit. The material I decided to use for that was the trustworthy expanding film. Thinking about the spots where the most junk would likely stick, I applied the foam to the jacket, brushing most of it onto the sleeves, the collar region and the lower areas of the coat. When the foam was dry, it formed such organic looking structures, which will hopefully look like pieces of rotting flesh and gore, as well as other kinds of dirt, once we finished painting them. I also applied the foam to the putties, with the difference that I waited until it started to harden and popped the swelling foam with my brush. This way, the texture of it ended up being not as organic and roundish looking as the foam on the jacket, but more edgy and mud-like. Now that I had a texture I could use as a painting basis, I started to create a dark red colored paint mix. Since the foam is a really tough material to paint, I added flour to thicken the mix and put in some liquid glue to improve the color's adhesiveness. It is actually incredible how much paint you can save by diluting it with flour and water. This color mix right here, for example, consists to about 80% out of water and flour. Only 20% of it is real paint used as pigment. The ratio between flour and water defines how thick or watery the paint will be. Once all the paint was applied, I took my black spray paint, glossy spray paint by the way, and applied a very thin layer of it on top of the freshly painted foam. This really changed the look and made it appear like really old, yet still wet pieces of rotten flesh. I love it. You gotta keep in mind that all of this is still kind of a primer coat which will work as a backing for the real fake blood we will add later on. The same painting steps were repeated for the dirty mud sections on the coat and the legs of the creature. I sprayed on a thin coat of black spray paint on these sections as well. All the working steps you just saw were also applied to the bags and pouches I made in the last video. This way their look will match the rest of the outfit. Finally, I also decided to add one more layer of a muddy brownish paint mix because there were still some spots on the outfit which appeared to be rather new and untouched. The good thing was that I could always come back and darken areas which I thought had too much color using some more of the black spray paint. Sorry that I had to make a cut right here, I just you know kind of had the impression that the whole painting and weathering process would be a bit too much to cover in one single video. So the rest of it will be part of the next episode as well as making two awesome weapons and some more bits and pieces for the creature. The next episode is also going to be the final one of this monster making series and the one where all the components that got made throughout the last months will come together in one final product. So I hope to see you soon, thank you very much for watching and remember to always stay creative.